This video will be all about the Nord Beat app. So I want to show you how you can connect it to your drum pad and also what you can do with it. So you will have some good understanding of all the individual functions. My name is Janis, by the way, and on my channel, you can find many videos about the Nord Drum 3P. So you, in case you'll enjoy this video, you can already keep in mind that there's more to be found on my channel. In order to connect your tablet with your drum pad, you need some USB MIDI connector. And I have this adapter here. You can just find it if you look for some USB MIDI adapter and you have USB on one side. And also here you see I already have this adapter because nowadays with those modern devices, you basically always need some adapter. And on the other side, you have like those MIDI connectors. And here it's really important that you find the one that says out because it means that you send MIDI out from your device into in this case the Nord drum and there you have to plug it into the MIDI input. That's something that often is a bit confusing because um, maybe you want to put out into out but this doesn't work so you always have to make sure that out goes into in and vice versa if you use it the other way around. And then I can also connect this USB side to the tablet. And if you never touch the MIDI settings of your Nord Drum 3P, it's kind of likely that once you type in some notes and you can just tap those fields here and press play, that you will immediately hear a sound. But if you don't hear a sound, there's something you should check on your pad because first of all, under the menu of the app, you can go to some MIDI setup and you see that the app sends MIDI on channel 10. You can change it, but by default it's channel 10 and also the Nord Drum receives by default MIDI on channel 10, so that's fine. But maybe once you change the settings on your Nord Drum and you can check it if you click Shift and MIDI because then you access the MIDI menu and press it, press it until you're at the global setting. And here you have to make sure that it's also on 10 or it's the same number that you have here. So if here you would for some reason have 11, then you would have to make sure that this is also on 11. And then there's another thing to check because you see that there are MIDI notes assigned to those individual pads. And of course, they have to be assigned to those pads as well. And you can check that if you select a pad, so let's say because this pad is number one, what I have here. And if you selected pad one on your pad and press shift and MIDI, you can again press it until there's the note. And here you have to check that this first pad has the same note as here, so it's 60. So maybe you once also tried using the Nord Drum as a MIDI controller and changed that, and maybe it's on 55 for some reason, then you don't hear anything. But if you change it to the same note, there will be the sound and that's what you should check for every pad in case there's any type of problem. And once you made sure that all of this works, the programming part is quite straightforward because if I press play, we can visually see things move and then you basically type in some notes wherever you want to. And can make your little beats. And you can change the tempo on the right side, so you can make it faster and slower, also straightforward. And you can also shorten the sequence if you go with your finger to this row here, you see that it jumps back to the top quicker, which is sometimes really fun because you get some type of odd time signatures this way, they're just dragging things. And yeah, that's how this works. I just put it back to the full 16 position sequencer. Then for those individual nodes, you have different velocities, which is a little fiddly because either once a note is selected, you basically swipe up with your finger for the high velocity, which is red, or you swipe down with your finger for the kind of yellow greenish velocity, which is soft. And if you just type into it without swiping. It's the orange one, which is the medium velocity. And you can tell the sequencer here what that means. So you basically have three different velocities and you can say, okay, the soft one is in this case 48, but you can just swipe around and change it. And the same for the medium velocity and the high velocity. So now I could also add some of those different notes this way. This is now a totally random beat. It's kind of fun though. And for example, if I now bring this all the way down, you don't even hear those soft notes, but then if you add a little bit, you get those 
tiny ghost notes, which is actually a very fun thing to add. By the way, if you're not only interested in programming beats, but also in developing some little drumming skills with some electronic drum pad, be known that I made a full class about the subject of learning drums specifically with a small electronic drum pad. It's available on my Skillshare profile and there's a link down below in the description with which you can register one month for free, try it out for yourself, see if it's for you and otherwise just cancel it without any strings attached. Another fun feature are also those signs here because one of them is flam, it's the first one, and if you click on it and then click on a note, it will add a flam. So let's see what happens to the sound here. I remove this one. And a flam basically means that you have some additional stroke that comes a little before the actual stroke. And I kind of like this a lot that they brought this in because you can add a lot of kind of dynamics to your beat by just adding a flam. It sounds more fun this way. And you not only have the flam, you also have this kind of double stroke. So let's see how this sounds. Actually, it's also really fun. You can always <laughs> add more and so you get some type of rolls. Which is really cool because this way you don't have to make the whole sequence faster. You can build in those kind of faster strokes and you even have another layer of them, which is like a three stroke roll. And again, even one layer faster. Kind of fun to play with. What I didn't mention yet is that on the left side you can also mute individual parts. So if I, for example, want to mute those. So you have some kind of real-time mixer in some ways. Also a great tool is the shuffle function. And I programmed some other type of beat here because it only affects notes that are on the 16th note positions because we have kind of a 4-4 four, four bar and you have like the 1-2-3-4 counts marked in those kind of white frames and in between you have 16th notes and if you program a beat that contains at least some of them like this one you can make them swing by adding a shuffle and first you have to click on shuffle and then right now nothing happens it's just the kind of regular 16th note feel but if I increase this amount now you see, we get those kind of swingy, shuffly type of thing. You can make it very harsh, but that's too much for my taste. Usually, if you just add a little bit of it, you can add some more natural feeling to the music. So I like to add it in a way that I almost don't hear the effect, but it just makes those 16th notes a little less stiff. So maybe that's something I also want to experiment with. Another cool mode is the sequence mode, because here you can basically make structures of different sequences that kind of follow each other. So right now we only have one sequence, but let's say we also want to have a B sequence and it still has something saved from something I did previously. Let's actually just do it. And you also have to click on this in order to have the one. So now it plays first this A sequence. This one first and then this one. And you can also tell the app to play a certain sequence more often. So for example, if you hold your finger and swipe up, you can change the number here. And if it says three, it will play this B sequence three times. So first the A sequence once. Second time B. And then it goes back to A. So it's kind of a fun tool. And yeah, you can do this for up to eight positions. And you can also use copy and paste for making it easier to copy sequences to another position of your little arrangement here. So once you're at some sequence, let's say A, you can copy it, go to C and paste and have to press OK once. And so now you copied it to C and maybe you, this time you want to add a couple of notes. But Again, you have to tell the sequencer that it also should be played and I'll bring this back to one. And then you have another position here, another little sequence. And once you want to delete some sequence, you can also just clear. Again, you have to press OK once more and then it will be cleared. Also, this pad mode basically means that you can finger a drum. I think it's handy for this other Nord drum that doesn't have the pads. But yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory. Then under menu, you can store and load your presets and save them. 
So for example, if you want to save it, you can imagine a name. And what's actually very cool, you can also store the kind of patch you're using. So, I mean, here you have P128, which equals like the A to H on the Nord drum. But that's actually very cool. So if you say you actually want to save it with A17 in that case, and at some point you are at some other kit and you dial up this preset, it will just change again to the A17 kit. So that's a very nice feature that it stores the kit you want to have for some particular song. And I think I've explained all functions that are available to you. So now you can just try them out yourself and see what works for you. If you need some more inspiration on what makes drum beats more interesting, I'll link a video here that gives you some ideas about it. And also another one here about making sequences more interesting. And apart from that, I just wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.